Good day, everybody. How's it going this week? I hope you enjoy your Labor Day weekend for, for those who can. For those who are working on Labor Day, because apparently Labor Day doesn't celebrate the labor of those who uh, actually labor the hardest, our retail workers and our, you know, and other uh, such folks, um, my apologies. And hopefully someday the Labor Day will actually be a holiday where we can celebrate the worker. Um, in my personal opinion, I try to avoid going to, uh, this is just my personal opinion, which I usually don't give on the show too much, but, you know, I try to avoid using any shops or anything um, during Labor Day um, because it's like it just feels dirty and wrong. It's sort of like, you know, going to, you know, one of those Black Friday things on Thanksgiving. It's like I'll never, ever participate in that. I probably wouldn't even participate in, um, what's its name, in Black Friday either. Like the whole going to a store and getting run over by people. But yeah, that's another topic for another time. But anyways, I hope you do enjoy your Labor Day weekend if you can. Um, if you're working, then thank you for your service. And I hope you're compensated well for it. Probably not. But if you know, just know that your your efforts are freaking appreciated, particularly those who have to work on that weekend. I like bum people in, who work in offices all day like me who do get a day off. Um, I do remember working retail for multiple years, and you know, it it, it sucked. It sucks not having holidays that everyone else got. But on the plus side, I, I work Columbus Day. Hooray! I guess. But anyways, uh, back on the topic at hand. For those, some of you furs are probably going to be really enjoying your um, extended weekend if you do work in things that you can um, get that day off. Because you guys are working hard this last weekend. Um, this previous weekend is probably the most furry conventions that were run uh, at the same time. Um... Five furry conventions. Five! Five furry conventions! Uh, 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 were run this last um, August weekend. And there's a lot of statistics to go over for that. And it's, it's actually, you know, it's kind of funny. Because everyone's going, the fandom is dying! So here we go, here we go. Let's see, not you. There we go. There's all those numbers. Look at all those numbers. Look at all those numbers. Uh, there it is. All right. I'm like Wilson from, from Home Improvement. Well, neighbor, if you can see below here, there's a lot of numbers. We're going to talk about those numbers. Oh, I love my numbers. All right, so I'm sorry my, my, my channel could be a little impersonal sometimes, but I love my numbers. But these guys worked really hard for these numbers. And um, a lot of people, it's funny because a lot of people are going, the furry fandom is dying! Ah! You know, the whole tongue-in-cheek thing about, and some individuals, you know, indicating that the furry fandom is having issues. Um, and that is not what it was, and it's dying, and things like that. Um, if, that's, if that whole meme sounds familiar... I was doing it before it was cool, okay? So you can click on that video up there in the corner of the screen. And um, basically, I I was one of the first to go, ah, the furry venom is dying, and, and kind of seeing it for what it was is kind of a silly thing. But that silliness aside, so what we got here is um, a lot of statistics from Camp Fur, or... Camp Farrell, we didn't get any official statistics from what I've heard from Summer Cat. Um, they have a convention cap of around 220 people. So they, uh, they reached that cap. Um, and so since they reached that cap, um, they were able to... Um, they basically didn't have growth, but they kind of maintained how many people they had. All four furry conventions this weekend had growth. Um, one of the interesting ones is for Affinity United, which this is their first year of growth since they moved out of New Jersey into um, Virginia. 
Um, so the story behind that is that um, Fur Affinity United used to be a New Jersey convention, and they moved to the Virginia area outside of Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C. suburb. Um, somewhere near, like, within, like, 10 miles of furthermore. So, like, it literally is, like, that, like, for the size of conventions and things like that, that's actually the, like, highest quantity of convention, I think. There's, like, two within, there are two that are pretty sizable within, like, 10 miles of each other, um, in that Virginia area. Um, they did lose attendance because they moved out there, um... And which is kind of like one of the really first furry conventions that lost attendance that didn't end up dying, right? So most of the times when furry conventions started losing attendance um, at a notable rate, they would end up dying. In this case, it doesn't look like that's the case and that they're going to recover um, at their new home, which is good news for them. Um, we have Eurofriends. Um, your friends had an interesting weekend with a, a, a controversial thing in their note. Um, I'm not going to go over that too much on this channel right now, um, but the con chair had made a statement in the convention book. Um, but they raised the most uh, and basically you know, provided one of those Nazi furs F off bands that related to its own set of controversies. Uh, if you want to have the whole debate about that thing um the flara article that has these statistics in the thing below um has a comment thread that goes into that pretty much in big in big and probably too much detailed depths <sighs> i spent way too much time talking to some guy on the internet about it that happens uh, it's part of my youth it's part of who i am it's something that happens so but it, is, it was a good, it was a good, interesting conversation. So if you want to get into that, I would go to that comment section at Flara in the description below. I'll even link to the comment thread that sort of started it. Patch sort of said something, and then somebody else said, and then the guy at furry.es said something. And so those are two, um, those are two different journalistic organizations in Flara, and apparently they have some political disagreements about things. And so, and, you know, it's not like I'm politically neutral. It's just like I'm, like, it's just, it, it's, it is what it is. Um, you can find out more in that on the, the description below. But that can take a lot of air out of the conversation of all the hard work that, you know, your friends did as a convention to bring in the more attendees and to raise quite a bit of, um, to raise quite a bit for charity, um, the charity numbers are also below, and you can see that the amount that they raised for charity is quite extensive per person. Um, it's translated into American dollars. It was forty-one euro. It was forty-one k euros. Um, so it's forty-seven thousand ish American dollars. So you know, it's 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 interesting in that in that regard. Um, how much money they were able to raise um, in that. Um, it did lead to a conversation where it's like, what, like, you know, Raukin being the um, ethnocentrist he is, and or basically anti-American, <laughs> person who doesn't like America like too much, not because he doesn't like America, but because he thinks America takes too much of the conversation. And yeah, America can be, can be quite a yap fest for sure. Um, so he's very, like, he very much likes to talk on the foreign end of things, which is needed. It's very much a necessary conversation in an international fandom to have individuals who are more, you know, who will, you know, appreciate the foreign, despite, like, the largest conventions being in the United States. And I appreciate that for sure. <laughs> Could be a little on the nose sometimes about it, but, you know. So he went, oh, yeah, see, look, our, us European furs, we're raising more money than you guys are. And I go, okay, yeah, sure. But the issue here is, is that when you're talking about conventions overall, um, American conventions have cool, we have a, like quite a number of them. And my, I'm, I'm like starting to think about like, this is an interesting sort of topic where, you know, our furries over extrapolating themselves on the charity where they can't really donate as much to charity per person 
as the Europeans can because the Europeans don't have as many conventions to attend in a year. So the people who are local to that will go to that convention, you know, do or die. It's like, if I, if I live in Germany and I need to go to a convention, it's Eurofriends. Like, that's, that's the decision I have. And, you know, and whereas in America, it's like, well, I have my choice. And I think that's because Americans have this sort of independence sort of thing streak going for them. And sometimes that's to our detriment because, um, before I go on to this ramble, it's a sort of conjecture. So it's sort of my idea and take on it for my understanding. Like, Americans are very independence centric so you know someone will go i'm gonna make a furry convention and like some individual out there will do it and they just you know take the time get the means get a group and do it um and we don't really sometimes take into consideration talking to other people about it or forming a group with other people and doing that sort of thing and trying to figure things out sometimes we do i think that um furthermore and furry affinity united I think they're in conversation, and I think that they make sure that their convention isn't stepping on each other's toes since they're so close to each other, so they have one in the spring, early spring, and one in the late summer to sort of put some distance for local furries so that they can go to two conventions a year, you know, without having to have, like, two that are, like, right close to one another and all that. Um, so that's, that's good on them. So, you know, that kind of cooperation can help, but it also lowers the amount of income that they can take so if like fur affinity united and 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 furthermore like somehow joined forces and became a larger convention then obviously they can raise more for charity would their attendance go up probably not so much because probably there's a lot of overlap between who attends furthermore and who attends for affinity united um so like, would their attendance grow much more if they, if they quote-unquote, united? N it can't really be said. But what would increase is the charity amount, because people donate to the charity at Furthermore. They don't have as much money to donate. That same person who attends for Affinity United may not have as much money to give to the charity. So they kind of spread their money out a little bit. And with so many, like, conventions in the Northeast Rust Belt area, you know, it does impact how much a person can um, contribute per person. And it would be interesting to know which convention does contribute more ch most charity per person, uh, per capita, and what the heart lot, the largest of that was. Um, right now, Eurofrance, the Eurofrance was $16.48 per attendee. Um you know donated to the charity which is the highest i've seen but i haven't done that calculation across like all conventions like really small startup conventions could actually have it's, it's one of those cool things like if if somebody took the time to um invest in the whole charity per capita thing it could literally be something that the smaller conventions can compete in actually probably even better because if the smaller conventions have less people and they're donating more money to the charity, then that gives them a leg up on the larger conventions that have a lot more people but might donate less people per, per dollar. Um, it's fascinating because the most that's been donated to charity by a single convention right now was Midwest Fur Fest 2017. That was at about $85,000, I do believe. Um, so it was $85,000 for the one convention in 2017. Um, which they made a bigger deal of that than them overtaking Anthrocon as the largest city for a uh, largest furry convention, which kind of shows that the conventions in the Northeast really have, don't care about who the largest one is more than they care about trying to help other people, you know, cause that's, you know, the content of the character, particularly of those who run conventions. Um, and it speaks to that for sure. So like, but it was $85,000, but there was like 84, 8,400-ish attendees. So it was like a little over 10 bucks a person. So Eurofriends beat them per capita in, in how much they donated. Um, and as I said, foreign conventions could have a leg up there and smaller conventions could have a leg up in donations per capita for sure because the frequency of, you know, the abundance of conventions is more consolidated. 
which might be to their benefit because like sometimes you know when individuals create conventions they step on each other's toes when furry groups very furry groups in america can seem very clicky because there's there's such an abundance of options that people can be picky people can be choosy they can go here they can go there and they can make decisions based on their own personal preferences and tastes whereas conventions over at the um over in, in foreign areas may not have that option as much which i think is why a lot of foreign furries are a little more defensive like a lot of furry a lot of foreign furries who are not like hard left wing and ideals are a little you know like have a little bit of concerns about the whole Eurofriends thing I think that's why that they came from that position because they don't have as many options to go okay well this guy's not you know this guy's not making me feel comfortable so I'll go over here instead you know there that option might not be as prevalent so people might fight for whatever they want to fight for um, and I think that might be the reason that motivates that particular individual but as I said, you can read that whole argument about the armband or the the sticky bands thing in the description uh, at the comment section below, and I won't yammer too much on about that. So the most interesting one, uh, uh, most interesting um, one of the one was the first year um, convention at the first year convention at Denver. Um, I call it like it was an interesting debate about like that whether it can be considered a first year convention or a spiritual successor convention to Rocky Mountain FurCon, which I covered up here. It's one of my most popular videos on this channel, um, covering the Rocky Mountain FurCon closure and the issues around that. Um, very much a political um, crap storm, as it were, um, and still reverberations of that crap storm coming out today but i think that in the end it shows that despite the 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 headwinds and the and the hard waters and the rough waters that people in that area are dealing with with particular political groups and political ideologies and conflicts that they're able to move forward and create a convention that people feel welcome in people engage in and come together and basically replace what was lost um so denfer basically so if you look at it and this is the reason why a lot of people are at it. so technically denfer is the largest furry convention startup furry convention um at this point it's the largest first year attendance at 2048 attendees on the premier year um, but it is a spiritual successor to rocky mountain fur con so this uh, graph chart here shows the attendance rates of furry con of the furry convention at Denver and so and our no, sorry Denver conventions all Denver conventions so basically these are the, the attendance rates of furry conventions in Denver in Denver not Denver Denver thanks you guys for doing that thank you for picking that name now I've got to trip over my tongue every time I'm trying to enunciate enunciate between Denver and den fur fur so I'm just gonna say den fur every time I want to say den fur instead of saying Denver okay there now the enunciations are clear so this is all the Denver conventions the thing in 2018 is den fur okay Whereas everything before 2016 and before is Rocky Mountain Furicon. So 2017 was the um, time where the uh, Rocky Mountain Furicon uh, indicated that they were closing in, in the month of April 2017. And the whole political storm that happened from that. And then in one year they rebanded Rubber Band Man. They, they pulled it out and they did it and they got through it. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, it was a big social political shakeup for sure. It is, a, it was a changing in dynamic of, you know, of, you know, people in charge and what, in, and reorganizing and regrouping and creating a convention that, uh, people can still come together and enjoy the fandom 
in their own way. And basically, you know, that kind of happened. Now, Denver obviously, Denver obviously had a lot of issues with individuals who um, utilized tactics in the late stages of Rocky Mountain FurCon um, to buy groups of rooms. And unfortunately, to me, that means that this is a weaponization. As much as people would like to say, well, it, see, here's the thing. When I said, in my original video, when I was talking about the closing of Rocky Mountain Furcon, um, I talked about how the individual could have had the goodness of their heart and said, well, I'm going to buy rooms and I'm going to give them out to my group because I'm a socialist. I'm acting as a socialist, okay? Because here's the thing. Hotel rooms are expensive. They're expensive things, so it's like, well, I have a bunch of friends that I want to buy hotel rooms for, because out of the out of the goodness of my heart, TM. And I said why a lot of people misconstrued that with um, sort of a vulturist capitalist sort of stance, like taking rooms that other people could buy for people who may or may not show up, or for people who aren't even haven't even claimed or wanted rooms yet, can leave it so that the people who want the rooms who don't, you know follow the same political ideologies could do that. So basically what happened was is this group called the Furry Raiders, right? For the for sort of a recap. Bought a group of rooms at the hotel. And they did so because they wanted to disseminate amongst individuals who are part of the Furry Raiders. They wanted to sort of buy their own room block within a room block. That was their intent. But since the same tactics were used this year at the premiere of Den Fur then it can kind of it's basically kind of revealed that it was not an accident and even though they people said that's wrong you shouldn't do it and the convention even said that's wrong you shouldn't even rocky mountain fur cons like that's wrong you shouldn't do it and most furry conventions are probably now have a policy where it's like one room for one person um one room per per purchasing person and so, like, we have to establish that because of this action, yet they continue to engage in it. Which means that it's now, it's no longer a goodness of their heart. I'm going to do this for the goodness of people. I'm doing this as a hostile action when it was, let, when it was known to me and known to the people that this action is not welcome by the people on staff. And it's unfortunate, but it sort of highlights the issue. Um, because of that action, um, the individual in question did show up um, to the convention, and they were escorted out. And you know, they had they, they ended up having a backup plan, which was they they went out and they had fun with their friends at some camp somewhere. And you know, that's the best solution if you're having ideological differences or if you're having issues with individuals of a group. It's better to enjoy the group that you're with. If you want to enjoy the group that you're with, you know, have arrangements. You don't need to go to a convention to be a furry. You don't have to engage in conventions if you don't wish to. If, if, the, if the convention space is too political or too um, harsh for you, you can always go and enjoy furry in your own way. You know, like... Some people don't want to go to the city. Some people don't want to, you know, some people can't stand the outdoors. People adapt to their environments and are used to their environments and they want to enjoy the environments they feel comfortable in. And if, you know, you, if you can't engage properly with the environment in which you're trying to engage in, then finding a different environment in which to engage in is probably within one's best interest. And... I wish them well if you know they continue to you know do that and join together and come together and do their own thing. I'm I'm not against people assembling, but if they're assembling to try and disassemble other organizations that are trying to do their best in order to provide a a welcoming and wonderful experience for the convention guests, and they and a person tries to you know subvert that in any way, shape, or form knowingly and doing it knowingly in this case it's it's kind of it's unfortunate but it's you're it's like you're not going to be welcomed if you're not going to listen to the people who are trying to maintain decent relationships and things like that 
And, I mean, that's all I got to say about that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a lot of thumbs down for that particular viewpoint, but that's my viewpoint on that. So, like, anything up from, like, 10 minutes ago is sort of, you know, personal opinion. But at the end of the day, like, it shows that despite the wounds of things, people can heal, right? Despite the wounds of the past, people can heal and heal over time. Um, some people need to do more healing than others, and some people need to, you know, reassess, you know, their methods and what they want out of life and how to go about it. But at the end of the day, you know, if people want to come together and build a strong community and, you know, and put in the time, the effort, and the due diligence, then they can come back. And I think that at the end of the day, you know, the idea of the furry fandom dying was because of um, lo lots of convention losses around Rainforest and Rocky Mountain Fur Con and um, other such conventions and the roughness, uh, uh, Oklacon, you know, uh, there was a bunch of conventions, not just Rocky Mountain Fur Con, that had suffered losses for many different reasons. Some of them self-inflicted, some of them by outside aggression. But at the end of the day, people are going to do people are going to fight for their right to assemble. And sometimes they have to understand that not you, you have the right to assemble, but other people have the right not to interact. And that, you know, if you, you, you want to have groups, then you can have groups, you know, it's, it's just that simple. And I think at the end of the day, I think people will understand that and come to, um, find peace within themselves at some point. Obviously, there's still people trying to find that, and they and I wish them well on that endeavor. Um, but at the end of the day, um, as far as statistically and numerically at this point, um, I see the grant the the fandom is on a growth spurt. Even though some people think it's going to crash, I guess, or the furry fandom is dying. But it feelings and figure figures are in my mind better than feelings because feelings are based on assessments and feelings are easily manipulated um or in the words of some people in those organizations the facts don't care about your feelings the facts are the facts and you know use those facts and use those numbers to evaluate whether or not what you believe or feel is true or whether it's an illusion you're selling yourself and to your own detriment as a, as a person to learn and, and grow in the future. Anyways, I didn't want this to get too political, but, you know, unfortunately, this is the fandom we live in now, right? We, you know, we have people who feel certain things about certain, you know, ways that... Uh, things, and I can cover... Um, if, if it is desired, I can cover some of those things more in depth. Um, but at the end of the day, like it, this overall sort of arcing thing, as far as like fandom news and things goes like that, we are growing to the part where there is a micro element to the fandom that is being missed. And, you know, there is a macro element in which people want to discuss, but it doesn't really... It doesn't really get to the ground floor, right? Like the, it, the, the fandom is built on a foundation of artists, of talented individuals, of talented staff, and that's the foundation in which it grows from. And a lot of them, people don't even know their names. And it's a thankless job. And when we're talking about conflicts between griffins and yellow dogs and Huskies with rainbow things on them, that ground level stuff can get missed. And I think that I don't want to dwell too much on the political feelings of individuals, no matter which side they're on and this channel too much. I would love to try to, you know, understand more about the foundational levels about how, you know, conventions function and how things work in order to help people improve those particular functions and as artists and stuff like that and you know i would love to you know help people in that regard 
you know, help people know how to network, where to go, where to, where to, how to pursue what makes, what will make them most happy. Because I think at the end of the day, that's where this whole overarching political problems come from is there are people who are unhappy because they don't understand where to go and what to do. They've lived their lives in the fandom in one way and then that way and then the environment around them changes so they don't know what to do next. They don't know where to go. They don't know how to enjoy themselves. They don't know how to connect with other individuals socially that might, you know, give them happiness in spite of, you know, you know, not being considered popular or anything. Because I think at the end of the day, that's what people would like to see more from journalism of all stripes, whether it's inside the fandom or outside the fandom. And at the end of the day, that's that's how you know that's how I see the direction of the fandom going. Is that you have to kind of live by the example that you want to see in the outside world, even if the outside world tries to push you into the direction that it go that it wants to go in because it's easier it's more lucrative um i'm not earning i'm not i don't have a patreon and the very reason for that after much consideration is because even because i had monetization which i basically made nothing off of having such a small channel it basically i said i decided not to because i've seen because on a channel like this where I'm trying to talk about, you know, act, what I actually see and actually assessing data, having money thrown at me is way too much, particularly in a Patreon level, is way too much of a political tool that somebody can use in order to financially sway my decisions. And unfortunately, I think that's happened to some furries um, in who are YouTube celebrities. Um, I do think that I, I, I don't, I'm not going to name names, but I think a lot of you can think about who. Somebody, somebody who's a YouTuber makes about $3,000 a month um, on those kind of contributions, on Patreon contributions. And they're, very, they're a very political individual, and it makes you wonder what the political affiliations of the people giving them money are, and if that can influence their statements and their beliefs in order to you know empower those who have the money to give them money particularly when that same individual is claiming that it's a bunch of rich white dudes that you know have control of the band anyways probably revealed who i'm talking about there to some of you but at the end of the day this is way off topic but you know obviously as you'll see in that discussion at the flare article about this it is a subsequent discussion that a lot of people want to have even if I don't, it's not the direction I want to go, I have to address it because that's the thing people want to talk about. And sometimes you don't have a choice as to what you want to talk about when it comes to um, issues that the fandom wants to talk about um, because some people want to talk about certain things. And I think that at the end of the day, some people want to talk about stuff just to get it off their chest, but they don't really, in essence, know what they actually want. Um, because there's a lot of social conflicts and things like that. Um, but I'm rambling at this point. Um, so enjoy your Labor Day weekend because I'm going to. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go back to the Syracuse and hang out with family for a bit and, you know, take some time to take some deep breaths of that air of that non-buffalo air and relax a little bit and under and and be able to get this cabin fever a little bit out of me and uh you know take time to enjoy the things that matter in life and i hope that you do so as well i'm going to get that hop out of here thank you very much for watching this rue ramble kick that like if you like the content kick this comment in the comment section kick the subscribe button and uh so what do you think about did you attend any of these five furry conventions and uh, what was your experience with them? Because I would I, I think that people would love to have you share your stories in the in this in the description below um, If you want to discuss the politics surrounding the whole convention scene um, I guess feel free I'm not going to engage too much on that because I've engaged in it too much already 
Um, and I think that there's more important things um, to discuss. I have a, I, I think that there is a very important video um, in the near future um, dealing with a very um, concerning situation within the fandom, which I think does need to be discussed and can be lost in the conversation. Um, but uh, some furries have covered it on YouTube and things like that, and I will uh, discuss uh, their experiences with it. Um, so I'm going to get the hop out of here, and I'll see you guys next week.